So good afternoon, Daryl. This is our uh, wood design project presentation. That's Wiley, this is I, and I'm Brandon. And we'll be going through how we designed our building and some calculations of certain members that we thought were important. More members will be solved in the report that you'll be able to see. So the objective of this project was to design a building, a one-story wood structure from the top to bottom that includes a full loading analysis, a theoretical analysis, a complete truss analysis, a one meter compression or a four meter compressive member, a seven meter flexural member, and a masonry foundation. So the structure uh, is a large study hall named uh, the Taylor Study Hall after Wiley Taylor. And the following uh, structural systems were analyzed. The truss group, the wood studs are the stud walls that support the truss, the joist flooring system for the floor, the beams to support the floor joist, and the masonry foundations to support the whole building. So the roof loading analysis, the roof had multiple loadings on it, so it had dead loads, live loads, snow loads, and wind loads all forced on the roof. So a sample calculation of factoring the loads on the roof. Uh, there's the case two load, we have 1.25 dead load, 1.5 live load, and 0.5 snow load, and that gave us a total KPA of 3.16. And for a case three, we have a 1.25 dead load, a 1.5 snow load, and a 0.4 wind load, gave us a total KPA of 4.75, so we went with case three with wind covering. The roof system consisted of corrugated steel roofing instead of the typical shingles. There's plywood sheathing, rockwool insulation. We account for mechanical electrical allowance and drywall. The truss members vary in sizes with five meter being the largest member. And we decided that the, all the members would be two by six SPF studs. And there's a 30 degree slope on the roof. So for this sample calculation, we're showing the bottom cord of the truss that spans the five meters. And we, have, we are showing uh, the TR and MR equations. So with those, uh, you also have to solve for combined loadings. And we all know that uh, combined loadings have to equal less than uh, one. And for this uh, truss member, it equals 0.95. So therefore, it's uh, two, two by six is sufficient for this tension member within the truss. So then for our wall system, it was designed with studs within the wall, and we had to look at combined loadings because the stud wall has to resist combined loadings from axial and flexural uh, loads. So we had a four meter unsupported length uh, stud, and we decided this to be a two by eight with 15.5 millimeter DFT plywood acting on the side of the building for shear. So here's another sample calculation for deflection on that uh, wall stud. So for deflection, you have to meet L over 240 as specified by the project. For this member, we checked L over 240 against the, the max deflection calculation. And as shown by the calculations on the board here, it passes. So therefore, the two by eight member was sufficient for that wall stud. So then for the flooring system, we had hardwood floor uh, finish like a hardwood finish uh, on top of plywood subfloor and supported by floor joists. So the floor joists are 3.5 meters of unsupported length. They are spaced at 400 meter spacing. And we selected a two by 10 SPF joist member for this uh, section. And then we had to calculate bearing within this member. So we determined that the bearing lengths on the joists were 16 millimeters. And then in this sample calculation, we show how we got the bearing length. So you set QF equals, or QR equals QF, and then you manipulate the QR equation to find L, which is the resultant 16 mil that we previously set. Uh, so into the beam analysis, so the four system joists were all supported by structural beams, which rested on the masonry foundation. Uh, and the largest unsupported beam length was eight meters. Uh, based on these values, uh, a 241 millimeter by 394 millimeter Douglas fir laminated beam uh, was determined to be adequate to meet all the uh, criteria uh, with an 11 millimeter bearing length. 
so a sample calculation for the beam, we uh, demonstrated the deflection calculation. Uh, we chose this calculation because it differed from the other defect deflection calculation. Uh, delta max was still found in the same manner, L over 240, but uh, the deflection of the beam is identified in the Wood Design Council Handbook uh, by isolating the EI min. Uh, so for the beam that we chose, the EI uh, min was 9,540 times 10 to the 9 newtons uh, times millimeters squared, and the beam's EI was 10,269 times 10 to the power 9 newtons times millimeters squared. Uh, therefore, the beam meets the deflection criteria. Uh, so then we had to solve the masonry foundation. As learned in class, we use masonry block. So for this, we selected 300 millimeters dirty MPA cinder block. And then the concrete foundation will be 50 mil thick basement plug for the basement floor. And it's going to sit 50 mils above the footing. And then for the block, the block height for the wall, we set it at 1.8 mil or meters uh, due to the frost depth in Kingston being 1.2. And then the area of construction is surrounded by Andre and clay, so we have to set our K value for this equation to be 0.9. So then this, this sample calculation just shows you how we figured out the criteria for our masonry foundation wall. So you have to find M max, FH, and then also PF. So M, uh, M max is, for this one, it's 6.39 kilonewtons per meter per section of wall, like per meter of wall. And then the PF value from all of the loads above foundation wall was totaled to be uh, 14.077 kilometers per meter. With these two values, we looked into the interaction diagram and it was determined that our foundation wall needs 200 millimeters squared per meter of uh, steel to help support the masonry foundation. Uh, and so then we got into the uh, anchor bolts. Uh, the anchor bolts are used to prevent the lateral movement and overturn of the building. Uh, the bolts are cast into the cinder block to fasten it in within concrete, uh, and then also through the wood plates running along the bottom of the wall. Uh, a washer and uh, nut are used to increase the surface area of the wood resisting overturn. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and so this is an example uh, calculation for the bolts. We isolated the shear calculation uh, by multiplying the wind loads by the applicable wall height and truss height. Uh, providing us with a, a shear force of 978.2 kilonewtons. Uh, then we went into the table 3 4 bolt, bolt data tables, uh, which indicated that 5A325 uh, three quarter inch bolts uh, met the shear requirements, providing a shear resistance of 113 kilonewtons per bolt. So this uh, provided us with five bolts per wall. Uh, exceeded the shear force applied, and therefore every wall would have five bolts within it. Uh, so moving into the uplift analysis, the uplift analysis is bracing for the lateral loads applied on the basement building, creating, uh, creating uplift. It must be resisted by the anchor bolts and washer nut assembly uh, and the base plates. So the greatest uh, factor wind load was applied to the greatest uh, wall surface area, and the wood design manual provided a tensile resistance uh, based on the bolt and washer size as well as the steel material. Uh, and with this we were able to isolate a 76 millimeter by 6 millimeter washer was adequate to resist uplift. So in conclusion, uh, we were able to build a building out of 38 by 140 millimeter SPF uh, truss members, 38 by 184 SPF stud walls, uh, and 38 by 235 SPF floor joists, uh, 241 by 394 millimeter dozen spur laminated beams, uh, anchor blocks with 200 millimeter squared of steel uh, per meter of wall, and three quarter inch A3325 steel bolts with 76 by 6 millimeter square washers. Uh, for references, we mainly use the wood design manual. Uh, we had our instructor, Daryl Serrells, to give us some help, and we had a couple of our classmates, Michael Regan and Mike McCallum. Uh, to provide us with some practicality uh, insight for instructing.